Hello, Angel here. Are you new here? Welcome, it's lovely to have you here. Are you a returning subscriber? Welcome back. Thank you for stopping by again. Goodness me, you're a glutton for punishment, aren't you? <laughs> so today we're doing a VR. Um, this was a VR that I saw on Candy's channel and just a bit of a confession, I'm totally missing Candy from Candy Soul and Soil. So I've been like, watching all their videos on repeat um, because I just love them so much and I miss them so much. Um, I have been watching their um, other channel, Tiny Soul Whispers I believe it's called, um, but yeah I'm so so missing them on their on their Candy Soul and Soil channel so hopefully they'll be back soon. Come back Candy, we miss you. We miss you! Um, okay so this is hashtag circular decks. Um, this is a VR originally to iCarly Sunflower um, but I went in to look at their VR and unfortunately they're, they're unavailable now. Uh, there was also um, uh, a VR from Rose Honey Ritual that was also un unavailable. So um, I'm going to link Candy's video instead in the description box. So with that being said, let's get into the VR. So just to mention that this VR came, came about because I've been going through my collection quite recently and um, quite extensively um, whilst doing other tags myself. And um, I came across my circular decks and I was thinking I should totally be doing a circular deck month. So spoiler alert, I might well be doing a circular deck month in April. Uh, I'm promising nothing, but I'm feeling really drawn to that. Anyway, so let's get into the first prompt. The first prompt is what draws me to circular decks? Um, and I'm going to start by showing this deck. Um, now, I'm just going to say that this deck I used to use for my new moon readings. Um, and then I just kind of stopped and put it back in order. And it's been sitting on my shelf, as mentioned. And this was definitely a Lisa Papaz, Lisa Papaz made me do it uh, deck. Uh, mainly because they were so enamoured with this deck. Um, and I kind of was like, oh, you know. Oh, I'm intrigued. I want to find out what that deck's like as well. So here we are. Uh, what draws me to round decks or circular decks? That's a great question. I think I'm not going to say that I was specifically drawn to this deck because it was round. I think I'm just drawn to it. I love the black and white in it. Um, I love the the choice of patterns, which, you know, um, what's the word? I can think of it in the language that the other language I speak. I can't think of it in English. Uh, separates which kind of separates the image out so you can see the image without it being just shaded black and white uh, which I think Lisa Pepez mentioned also actually to be honest and um, so it's not a circular decks per se that, that draws me it's more the artwork um, however since thinking about this whole um, circular month month <laughs> wait that's two months uh, thinking about doing this whole circular deck month is what I'm thinking about um, it's kind of got me thinking about how to read them and how to interpret the messages. Because obviously, you know, with the normal um, uh, tarot cards, you've got the up or the, you know, the um, the upright or the reversal. Where here, you've got quite a lot of um, ways that the card can be read. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, that wasn't really a quite an answer, but that is my answer to what draws me to circular decks. It's not actually the shape, it's more the uh, artwork. Sorry if you can hear my kitty cat. He's found a toy to play with and he's leaping around like a little mountain goat. Um, hey up. <laughs> uh, question number two. What challenges do you find that circular decks present? <clears throat> okay, so that's kind of what I was speaking about. How to read them. And I've been thinking about this now. With the whole thought process of, of um, doing a whole circular deck month and i'm just going to move this away quickly uh, and i'm going to show you another deck which isn't round so i'm kind of cheating but bear with me it will all be explained this is the mother tarot this is an indie deck that i use for my blood moon cycle um practice and um let's just show you a few cards so you can't get the gist these are beautiful love the colors i love the art style in this and obviously this comes out you know monthly um, and I kind of read this one quite intuitively. Um, warning for nudity, I should have said that. I'll put a, um, a what's the word? A warning a little bit earlier on in the video for you. But yeah, I love I love these. Anyway, just to go to the guidebook, um, I've been feeling drawn really recently to um, the elements, north, east, south, west, obviously. And, um, and I'm just going to show you the guidebook here quickly. This is for the mother tarot and this deck speaks about reading the cards in different directions um so you've got the upright 
which would obviously point to north, winter, earth and the dark moon. You've got it pointing to the right side, which would be east, spring, air, waxing moon, uh, upside down, south, summer, fire, full moon or left to the left, west, autumn, water and waning moon. And that got me really intrigued. And uh, this month I've been also working with the, oh, what's this called? The Wanderer's Tarot, I think it's called. And in the Wanderer's Tarot is this little beauty. Let's see if I can show you the whole thing. Which I think is why this, um, you know, the um, the elements are suddenly like really resounding for me because they're kind of in my face. They've been in my face this month. Um, and so I'm thinking of, uh, reading these cards directionally I should be holding it like this shouldn't I but you're not going to be able to see it like this so I'm going to hold it like this instead and you hopefully get the idea um so yeah I'm thinking that's what that's what I'm going to do with the round decks let's bring some round decks back in again because that's what this deck that's what that's what this uh is all about um where's it gone where's it gone I'm all in a kerfuffle I'm all in a kerfuffle so yeah, my thought process is uh, that I'm going to read them, uh, you know, directionally how they how they come out of the uh, how they come out in the reading. I think it's my plan. I don't know if that's going to work. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I'm going to say that um, shuffling these decks are also a bit of a challenge. Um, this one is quite big. I can't get my hands around it. Well, I can, but it's a real squeeze. So the question is. Uh, how do I shuffle these? I tend to shuffle these overhand. I'm not going to shuffle this because it's obviously in order. I'm not sure I'm going to be using this deck this month. Um, and I shuffle them overhand like this, you know, or I mix them up like this and then pull a card. Um, I'm, I tend to be a jumpers kind of person. I like jumpers that when I'm shuffling, um, you know, they leap out at me and slap me in the face. You know, read me, read me, which obviously is a bit difficult when I'm doing this whole, you know, let me grab another deck. Um, let's grab this deck. This is the world unknown. I mean, this is easier to shuffle, obviously. This is, uh, you know, easier to handle. Um, I don't tend to riffle shuffle this one. Let's see if I can do this. These are quite, no, these are quite sturdy cards. The cardstock is, you know, it doesn't really allow. So this is what happens when you riffle shuffle. Um, so I do tend to overhand this one. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I would say that, that those are the challenges with um, reading circular decks. But, you know, I shall possibly come back to you after the month of uh, April if I've been doing a circular deck month. Uh, the next prompt. How many circular decks do I have in my collection? I have eight in my collection thus far. Um, I'm going to show you those in a wee second. The next prompt. How many circular... No, I've read that one. Sorry. <laughs> uh, the next prompt. My most recent circular deck purchase. And that is going to be this one. This, this is the Daughters of the Moon Tarot. I found this second hand on, I think it was eBay. I can't remember now. It was either eBay or it was that um, second hand um, charity shop online. It was online anyway. Um, it was about £20. A guide that came with it. Um, and I'd seen this deck, this deck is the deck I'm talking about, um, on Liz at West Star Tarot's channel, I think, I feel. Um, and when it came up, I was like, I don't know, should I? don't know and then I was thinking oh, I'm just going to do it because it might not come up again especially not for 20 pounds so I did and um, so this is kind of also what's kind of fanned the flames that's a great saying um to work with circular decks um I think I've mentioned in a recent a very very, very recent video that um I started to read the guidebook for this one straight away and um, I'm just going to read you a bit out of the guidebook sorry if you can hear my kitty cat <laughs> He's in a real playful mood. Uh, this speaks about the shape. Um, and this says, other tarot cards, except for Mother Peace, which coincidentally were conceived at the same time as Daughters of the Moon, were rectangle and had positive meanings when upright and negative when reversed. When this mode is examined carefully, one can see that this requires thinking in duality or opposition, a concept developed by the um, patriarchal... Patriarchal... Oh, <laughs> patriarch... Oh! <laughs> put the name on the screen <laughs> either or mind an opposition such as day and night is created by separating day from night and placing them in opposition the feminist or holistic approach envisions day and night as peaks in a connected whole or cycle 
If we apply this approach to other familiar dualities such as self, other, old, young, spirit, matter, life, death, we observe how differently reality can appear. The more holistic approach is possible with round cards. Each image appears as a cycle of energy with varying graduations of positive and negative, blending in and out of one another. So yeah, I found that really interesting, I've got to say. I, I was reading, so I don't know if the cards were upright. Apologies if they weren't. <laughs> I'm so, so sorry. So, um, so yeah. Um, and then the, the last prompt is show your deck. So I've also already shown the Gorgon's Tarot, so I'm not going to show that again. Um, and I've shown this one, obviously, which was my most recent. Um, let's move along to the other round decks in my collection. And then let's speak about the possibilities of what's going to be showing up for my circular month. Uh, or circular deck month, sorry. So I've just shown this very, very quickly. This is the Wild Unknown Archetypes deck. Um, and this one sits in my tarot cart beside me. I use this very, very often. Um, and actually saying that, this one can come back in now because I've... I'm not using that one anymore. Um, yeah, I love the art style of this. Sorry, let me just grab my kitty cat. Oh, okay, accident avoided. And this is very interesting. I was thinking about the Apocalypsis Tarot earlier on today. I'm just going to pull this card out. I've got to read that up on, the, up on that one. Sorry. Um, it feels like a sign. Um, what was I saying? Oh, it's totally got me off track now. Um, this one sits in my tarot card, I think I was saying. And I use it very, very often. I only ever pull one card. Um, I was late to the game um, when it, where it concerns Kim Prance's work. I didn't get it. I didn't get the decks, first of all. And then the Wild Unknown Tarot deck like clicked, and that was it. It was like, full speed ahead. Choo-choo! Hopperborn Kim Prance's artwork, deck, uh, artwork uh, train. It's leaving the station now. So I now have um, Wild Unknown, I have this one, and I have the Alchemy deck. And these two... Oh my goodness me. I mean, even the world unknown. Yeah, I really like that deck now. That's found its niche. I've spoken about it before in my practice. But these two, um, I, yeah, I love them. And I'm going to say that the world unknown tarot was a slow burner. And I expected the alchemy and the archetypes to be slow burners as well. And they weren't. These ones were like, at the gate, boom. They were like, you know, they were speaking to me, which I really, really liked. Love this as well. Oh, I'm going to have to, sorry, I need to pull that aside and read that too. Um, so yeah, so that's um, one of them. I've shown you the Daughter of the Moon. Um, this was another secondhand find. This is the Motherpiece round tarot deck. Uh, this was also on eBay. Uh, and I've mentioned before, this is a deck I'm studying. I'm actually drawing the cards, like physically drawing them and then colouring them in. Uh, which is helping me kind of sit with the images a little bit more and um what's the word really take in what the message is and what's going on boy i thought he's going to be moaning at me sorry um yeah and this is the first time that i've actually um done a deck study what, no, oh bear with sorry second accident avoided holy moly he took a Running leap onto the another altar and uh, almost not lost my crystals. He's such a cheeky monkey, honestly. Right, sorry for the interruptions. Let's get back to what we're talking about. Oh. Honestly, that boy is such a cheeky. He was hiding from me in this room and I closed the door on him and he was just waiting for me to press record again and he suddenly <laughs> leapt onto that damn altar one more time. <laughs> oh, Golden Bennett, right. <sighs> This might be well, well be refilmed, so you might never see this. <laughs> oh, go on, Ben. It was like a comedy film in here for a second. Anyway, right, what was I saying? Um, yeah, this is the first time I've done a deep dive in this way, drawing the cards and colouring them in. It's been really great. Uh, I would definitely recommend it, and I would definitely do it again, because it makes me kind of like stop and really uh, look at a card, um, especially by drawing it myself and colouring it in. It really makes me look at the details. Um so yes, <laughs> holy moly. So that was the mother piece. That was another secondhand find or a secondhand purchase. I think my first, um, my first round deck was the Circle of Life Tarot. This one's got really beautiful backs. 
um, and this one I've never I've never used it and to be honest it was on the chopping block recently um, I gifted about 30 decks to do two different people and um, I was seriously thinking should I should I should I rehome this one I don't know and I was sitting there looking through the artwork and um, I kind of I kind of felt under felt a resounding no and I think the reason for that is that it suddenly occurred to me that I could use this for Dawn Michelle's um, um, Fellowship of the Weavers uh, quest this 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 year um, that if you if you're not um, a weaver it's it's quite a uh, but these kind of decks kind of um, would work really well I feel in the practice this year obviously you could use any deck you wanted to but for me it speaks of like this quest and um, this fantasy uh, theme I'm gonna say so um so yeah so for that reason I, I I kept it in my collection um I'm gonna give it another chance I, I think it's been in my collection for about two years but I mean look at this it's beautiful can you hear my kitty cat he wants in again he wants up on that altar he wants to knock off my crystals he wants to leap like a mountain goat can we stop please can you stop thank you very much very kind um yeah. So this one definitely deserves its chance. Maybe this, maybe. Oh, here we go. Here's an idea. If I'm going to do the whole, you know, circular month, circular deck month, then, you know, obviously I'm going to be working with Dawn Michelle's Weaver practice. So this could be my Weaver deck. Then I could have my Archetypes deck, which is obviously always here anyway. Love this. Um, and possibly the Daughter of the Moon tarot for my other practices that's a possibility watch this space um i've got two more decks to show you i think two more circular decks in my circular deck collection let's have a look okay so here we have another um oracle deck crystal medicine oracle um i felt really drawn to purchase this one purchased it i did like one or two um draws from it and then i kind of um put it on my tarot and oracle shelf uh, and since then it's been you know resting which is a real shame. So you never know; it's gonna, it might well come out this month. Um, here we go. These are the these are the backs, which I think are lovely. Uh, these are the fronts, and I really, I've got to say, I really appreciate appreciate the guidebook. The guidebook has got a really good description in it. Um, it's got a description about the, um, what's it called, the crystal, and then it's even got like um, um, like the medicine. Uh, this is like the medicine here the plant the tree it's got that kind of medicine on the cut on the in the description as well <sighs> honestly this boy does anybody want to want to adopt a ragdoll let me know in the comment section and then we've even in the guide that got um like a little ceremony or like a little ritual i don't think it's really good um so yeah i don't i don't know why this hasn't come out again i think it's just because you know I think it just gets lost behind some of my other decks on my tarot and oracle shelf. Oh my goodness me. Honestly. Oh, I love this. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I've got to pull that aside to read that one as well. Goodness me. I'm going to be looking into quite a few cards today. Oh, and did I think I've mentioned before previously, recently, that, um, and especially I did this in January, uh, when I've been drawn to, or like, you know, I'm looking at a deck and thinking, hmm, should I pull that one out for a reading? I pull it out, shuffle it and ask how it can help me um, on my journey right now. And that's been really interesting. You know, because some decks are like, yeah, no, I'm not ready to work with you yet. You know, get back to me. I'll, I'll give you a call. I'll, 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 you know, I'll get my people to call your people when we're ready to work together. <laughs> and other decks are like, you know, boom, here's your message. This is what I can help you with right this second. Um, so, you know, that's been really, really good. And usually I've mentioned before in a, in a recent video that I usually do deck interviews and those have been have taken a bit of a rest. And this has been my kind of method to gauge whether I want to work with a deck or not. How can this deck help me right now in my journey? What can it teach me? What can it do for me? So, yes, um, one last deck to show. Let's grab that one. So the last deck is the Cantagy or Cantagy. Uh, oracle this is a tried tested and true favorite um i tend i tend to work with this one um paired with the figuratively speaking tarot 
Um, I'm not saying that they're like a bonded pair, but um, they do speak really, really, really nicely together. Um, but whether they're going to come out this month, I don't know. Hmm, I'm going to have to, be, I'm going to, have to think about that, I've got to say. Yeah, I'm not too sure. But, you know, I don't necessarily have to work with all circular decks together. I could work with circular decks paired with other decks. <gasps> oh, that's not, an, 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 you know, an, an, an alternative as well. So watch this space. Anyway, uh, speaking about the Kanshi Oracle, sorry, I'm contemplating all what I'm going to do on my uh, circular <laughs> deck month. Uh, you don't need to wait and, and wait for my for the cogs to turn for me to decide what I'm doing in my mind. Anyway, the Kanshi, the Kanshi Oracle is an excellent, excellent Oracle deck. I love the keywords. They're really unusual. Um, I really love the art style, so much so that I would really like to get my hands on the Luminous Void Tarot. It's by the same um, illustrator or artist. I think it's gorgeous and it's so evocative. It kind of like... Um, it, it reminds me of like ink block tests as in like you see what you want to see i mean obviously you know you know this is obviously a tree but like this kind of thing for instance and even here i don't know it just um it just kind of invites me to look at the card in a different way i don't know it's, it's difficult to explain but for that reason i really like it now i know that this deck can also be worked with um like a card a week for 52 weeks I haven't done that. I've pulled this like uh, any other kind of Oracle deck, but I would really like to do that. If you've got this deck and you've done that, work with it, um, you know, as it's set out in the book, a card a, a week, please let me know and let me know your experience of it. I'd love, love to know that. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much all I can say, I think. Um, keep a watch out for April's intentions and decks. You know, I'm, the more I look through these round decks or circular decks, the more I'm feeling that April is going to be the month. But, you know, who knows? Uh, we're we're in the, nearly at the end of uh, March and a lot can happen. And, you know, sometimes those intuitive downloads come, don't they? And, you know, the path takes a different, a different uh, direction. So, yeah, anyway, so that was that. There we are. That was the tag. Um, I did really enjoy it. Apologies for all the interruptions and the, what's the word? Shenanigans. That boy, honestly, is very, very cheeky. Um, yeah, so anyway, thank you for spending some time with me. Uh, let me know in the comment section, do you have any circular decks? Uh, which circular deck is your favourite? And I'd be interested to know how you read circular decks as well, if you read them directionally. Or if you just read them, you know, upright, let me know. I'd love to know because I'm a nosy mowgli. Um, have a lovely morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are in the world. Take care and I really hope to see you in the next video. Um, thank you for spending some time with me. Doodaloo!